currently four in the morning and I'm starting my first Australia travel vlog. My flight is at eight o'clock and I've just woken up to see that there are severe delays on the Piccadilly line to Heathrow. So, so far not so great, but I'm gonna head off earlier than planned and just hope that I get there in time. I'm flying from Terminal 4 with Qatar Airways and yeah, I'm about to say bye to Rob. So I feel like that's not gonna end well. This camera is really not very good in low light at all, is it? Genuinely. Um, but yeah, I've just said bye to Rob. Um, I think I'm okay. I think I kind of got my, I had a cry yesterday about it. I know it's only six weeks, but when you live with someone, that's quite a long time. And um, it's just a big change. I've never done anything like this before. I've obviously moved abroad for a few months, but like I'm in one place for like a set period of time rather than traveling. So this is a big challenge for me. But yeah, I'm gonna go and get on the bus and we'll get these travel vlogs going, shall we? I've never flown on a double-decker aeroplane and I am so freaking excited. You bet I booked a seat on the top deck for the first flight. <laughs> I ended up walking to the underground because the buses were running like quite infrequently obviously at this time in the morning. Then I got the Piccadilly line all the way out to Heathrow and it just kept stalling, like the train kept stalling so it took like an hour, it was honestly the longest tube journey of my life. But I finally got to Terminal 4, then I had to queue for about an hour and a half to drop my bag. But once I'd finally got through, I went and got myself a prayer and I honestly just people watched for like 45 minutes which was really therapeutic just seeing everyone wondering where everyone's going then it was time to board the plane it looks so pretty with the sunrise as well and look how big it was it was huge double decker insane and of course as i said i booked myself a seat on the top deck um 29g to be precise unfortunately as cool as the top deck was and as cool as it was to be able to go up these stairs and feel like a top class citizen the entertainment system on my seat just kept playing up and the woman next to me well, she was an interesting character to say the least, so it was definitely an interesting flight, but um, the staff were lovely and the food was really good. I read my book and before I knew it, we were in Doha and I went to the air airport bathrooms to freshen myself up. Hello, so I've made it to Qatar. Don't mind me vlogging in the toilet, I'm still not very good at vlogging in public. I look very run down. It was only a six hour flight and it wasn't actually too bad. There were a few things that went wrong on the flight, which I would have mentioned in the voiceover, but I'm here now and I'm gonna have an explore of the airport because I actually have two hours till my layover, like till my next flight. Um, and I was kind of worried that wasn't gonna be enough time, but the gate information isn't for another 50 minutes because we landed early. So I'm gonna go and see what the airport's all about and also freshen up because that plane was so hot, my cheeks are literally roasting red and I think I just need to moisturise, cleanse. With my layover time, I just spent time exploring as much of the airport as I could, but it is massive. Anyone that has been to this airport will know how big it is. It's like you could get lost in it so easily. Saw all the World Cup stuff and I'd actually bought a, ready, uh, a meal deal from Boots before I flew because I wasn't sure if I'd have enough time during my layover, so I ate that. And then before I knew it, it was actually time to get to the gate and board the next flight. I was determined to sleep on this flight or at least get some sleep. So I blew up my inflatable travel pillow, which was an absolute lifesaver for the whole trip. FYI, if you're traveling, definitely get one of them. It saves so much space. And then boarded the plane. It was actually a really nice flight. I slept for the vast majority of it. Flying out of Doha, it was absolutely beautiful. Um, and yeah, I was out for the count within about an hour and the food was really good on this flight as well. I have to say I can't really fault Qatar Airlines food. Um, it felt like when we got to Australia that we were just flying over Australia for the longest time and that was when I realised how big Australia actually is. But I thought this shot of the plane landing was quite cool, like you can see the shadow of the plane. I think we landed at like 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock p.m. Melbourne time so I was a bit confused a bit like okay it feels like three in the morning for me or whatever but it was fine um but got to Melbourne and I grabbed my bags and got the sky bus to St Kilda because that was where my hostel was and the view I knew it was going to be a good trip straight from this view uh, I just got off the bus at St Kilda and I'm just walking to my hostel now I've never stayed in a hostel before I don't think um, so this is a new experience for me, but I'm very excited. I'm in a room with six people. I'll talk to you more about the hostel and my adventure project when I have a chance to just be alone and talk. So yeah, let's go. Hello everyone, so I have made it to my room. No one else is in here, so I can chat to you a little bit. First, I'll show you the view though, because it's gorgeous. 
so nice. So I haven't really had a chance to chat through why I'm here, what I'm doing here, etc. So I thought I'd do that now quickly. Basically, this trip has been very kindly gifted and organised by My Adventure Project. They're a UK-based travel agency and they can help you organise a custom trip to Australia or they've just started doing group tours as well if you want to backpack the East Coast with other people. And they sorted out all my accommodation, all my travel and all my activities activities so i'm really really grateful and i'm starting out in melbourne and going all the way up to cairns and then i'm going to come back to melbourne at the end of my trip just for a few days so if i don't do everything in melbourne that is why i'm only here for a short time but i'm going to be back at the end of my trip so downstairs they've currently got boozy bingo i think i'm a bit late for that now and i'm not gonna lie everyone is kind of sat in their groups so i think for now i'm just gonna have a shower i think everyone from this room is at the bingo, so they must already have all met each other, but yeah. Um, God, I can't believe I'm literally on the other side of the world, but as you can tell by my hair, you can tell I've been traveling. <laughs> Hello, here is me. Um, so this is kind of the dorm. It's a six bed dorm. I won't go too much into it because I don't want to see everybody's stuff, but this is my bed here, and I've got a locker here, and the lovely view there, and a bathroom. So thank you so much to Nomads for setting me up with this accommodation. It's literally exactly perfect for what I need it for. So I have just had a shower. I'm ready now. I've decided to brave it and go down to the bar. Whether I will regret this, I don't know, but all I know is that I could do with a drink, even though it's technically like lunch time at home yeah so my fringe has gone all weird um, and i'm already missing my round brush so i think i'm gonna need to go and get a round brush because right now my fringe looks like it's been matted down with an iron and it's not really a good look for me <laughs> Good morning everyone, so it's my first day here in Melbourne. I'm currently still in St Kilda. I got up, had breakfast with one of the girls from my room and then got dressed and now here I am. I don't know why I'm so backlit. You can't even see me. So last night opposite the club that we went to, I saw a 7-Eleven. So my job today is to get a SIM card and to get a card for the trams. Then we're gonna go exploring. Hello everyone, so I've got a SIM card, I've got data, I'm just setting up the app. Now, I'm now going to go for a walk down the beach front. Um, I'm meeting Molly and Tom actually, when Molly finishes work. So many of you when I asked Melbourne recommendations were like, are you not going to see Molly and Tom? Obviously I am. Um, and they're going to take me around the city, the city centre this afternoon. As I said, I am coming back at the end of my trip. So if you're thinking, why isn't she doing everything? I do have three more days here at the end of my trip. But as I'm staying in St Kilda, I thought that should be the first place that I go and explore. So yeah, come along with me. So I'm just walking along the pier. Look at these absolutely gorgeous views. I'm feeling so incredibly lucky to be here. Sorry about the weird flare on my lens, by the way. I think I dropped it on the way here and it's kind of ruined my lens. So that may be a regular feature in these vlogs. But I honestly just can't believe I'm actually here. I feel like I keep pinching myself, being like, I'm literally on the other side of the world. Anyway, I'm going to continue walking, but I'm so lucky, I just feel so grateful. Thank you, helicopter, for ruining my emotional moment. <laughs> Hello, so I just popped back to the hostel to grab my portable charger because I forgot to bring that. And now I'm going to head into central Melbourne on the tram. I've got myself a Mickey card. I'm feeling feeling on top of things at the moment. But anyway, I'm going to go and have a wonder and I'm going to go and visit the library. And then it should be time to meet Molly and Tom. I'm so excited to see them. It's just so weird that I've not seen Molly in ages and like the first time I see her is literally 
about as far away from England as you can possibly get. So, yeah. <laughs> I hopped on the tram, I believe it was the 16 into central the views on the tram were absolutely amazing i just think the skyscape the skyscape cityscape what's it called of melbourne is beautiful then i headed to chinatown and i got some sushi this started my obsession with sushi the whole time i was in australia the sushi there is so good and then i went to the library which was oh my gosh it reminded me so much of the rag cam in oxford it was just beautiful um, one of my favourite buildings that I saw the whole time I was there actually, I just think the architecture is amazing so I went and had a look around the exhibitions and all of the different rooms, I spent about an hour just wandering around here, really really enjoyed it and then I sat and waited outside for a little bit but Molly and Tom were still a little bit away so I went into the mall to go and get myself a smoothie and how cool was that Lego St Kilda tram, I just thought that was amazing, anyway yeah I got a mango smoothie before they arrived. So look who I am joined with, Molly and Tom. <laughs> literally the weirdest, I was just saying to them, it's so weird that I've not seen them in so long and then the time that I see them is literally the other side of the world. You couldn't be much further from home. Really. No. I actually don't know the last time I saw you. I don't remember the last time I saw well, you at all. Tom did just say, he was like, Eve's got really dark hair now. I was like, have you not seen her since she dyed her hair? No, like then I've that is I've a long time. Yeah, I've seen your hair on like Instagram and stuff, but I've never seen you in person. Ah, in person. And the first time seeing you in person, I was like, yeah, it's really different. It's really it nice. is. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> they're being my wonderful tour guides for today because they're living here at the moment. How are you finding it? Really like it, yeah. I mean, I don't love the climate. I was just saying, Eve's caught it on a good day because it's quite warm and quite sunny, but it's a bit chilly. Other than that, it's warmer today than it has been. Yeah, it's, it's like nice. Week. I'm loving the temperature. So, I have to have to well, say, so it is okay. Yeah, and especially is. for walking around, it's not too bad. It's lovely, but they're going to show me the sights, so uh, very excited. <laughs> So the Queen Victoria Market was actually closing up by the time that we got there but I still had a chance to have a wander around and see all of the amazing stalls that were on offer. It was huge, you could have spent hours there for sure. Then we went and saw all of the street art on Hosier Lane I think it's called, ACDC Lane. The colours of my camera just do not do this street art justice but we spent about 45 minutes just exploring all the amazing street art that there was to offer um, and taking a few photos. Then we headed to Federation Square and we went to a rooftop bar here for a drink and I mean, the view just speaks for itself. This city is stunning and I got so lucky to catch it in the weather that I did. Hello everyone. I look so pale compared to you now when I get to pick the camera up. I'm like, I literally look so no, pale. You're I'm lovely and sun I'm kissed. Not anymore. And I'm just like, <laughs> not at all. We are at the Shrine of Remembrance. It's very big, but look at the view. How impressive is that? It's a very nice cityscape. It's kind of like the perfect mix of urban and nature. It's very nice. I sound like David Attenborough. <laughs> um, but this is a shrine to remember. I think all of the wars, or like specifically the world wars, but I also think all of the wars that, that American, American, Australian troops have been involved. Right. Yeah, it's there's like a fire pit over there, which I'm loving. Yeah, I'm not sure really what that is. Like, what? That's then obviously, if anyone knows what that is, then please do. When it gets really cold. <laughs> but yeah, this is beautiful. And Molly said we definitely caught it on a good day, right? Yeah, so, 100%. yeah. To be fair, we were here literally just two days ago with yeah. Tom's friend, and it was freezing cold. So, yeah. well, how lucky is that? <laughs> I think it's one of the best views you can get. Well. I think it's it is. Yeah. Last time. It's so, gorgeous. Yeah, it's absolutely lovely. After the Shrine of Remembrance, we headed to the Royal Botanic Gardens. I am so sorry for the quality of these clips. I promise after Sydney, the quality of these vlogs gets so much better because I start using my phone. I don't know why my camera has just decided to break down on me, but it just washes out the color and the vibrancy and the textures so much. So sorry about that, it was beautiful. You can see it on my Instagram if you like. And then we headed down to the South Bank to Bang Pop, which was a Thai restaurant. And I had a lovely pad thai and um, this satay dip, which was, oh my God, it was so good. And then I checked my pacer and I'd done so many steps. This would become a common trend throughout the trip, to be honest. Hello everyone. So before I go back to my hostel, I've come to Molly and Tom's flat. You'll probably have seen it on her vlogs because I'm sure most of you actually watch her videos. <laughs> but the view outside is so cool. It's like a proper high rise building. And they're just making me, oh Molly's just taking her shoes off. Um, they're just making me a cup of tea before I head back. It's actually like quarter past seven. So it's, um, the day has just flown by, but we've had the nicest afternoon and I'm very grateful to them for showing me the ropes and showing me 
a bit of Melbourne. Um, I feel a little bit less terrified now about being here. <laughs> Honestly, um, you don't need to be terrified. I think you're gonna have the best. I'm more terrified at just your how lovely your tan is, and I'm like, honestly, white as a sheet. I'm honestly, I'm honestly not tanned. You should have seen me when I was Molly. In Molly, you I said was tanned Molly. Guys, thank you. Case in point. Sure. Anyway, I'll pick up the camera next time I do something. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like go back and just sleep, but I'm weirdly awake. I don't know what is going on. Like I woke up today fine. I've had energy all day. I've done like 30,000 steps. Honestly, she's doing so well. I was saying this when we were walking here. I was like, mm, I think you're glitching. Like, I think I am. It's not working because you should be so tired. He was like, oh, I'm hitting 30,000 steps today. And I was like, okay. Yeah, I'm honestly grand. Like, I'm, I'm sure it'll hit me at some point. Tomorrow. Um, yeah, imagine like midway through the Great Ocean Road. I'm just like, <laughs> I can't do this anymore. But yeah, okay. Good morning, everybody. So it is currently 7 a.m. And I was up at four. I could not get back to sleep. I tried. I read like half of my book. So today I am actually going on the Great Ocean Road tour, which I'm so excited about. I will obviously tell you more as I'm going through the tour. I'm so sorry it's so loud as well. It's literally trams everywhere. But to be honest, it was a good job that I couldn't sleep because I had to get up at six o'clock because it starts at 7.55. So I'm just heading to the pickup point now. So the tour picked us up at the Crown Promenade Hotel, which was a quick tram ride away from my hostel. And it was very kindly gifted by Go West slash Bunyip Tours. And I had the best day to this day. I'm now recording this voiceover being back at home. It was one of my favorite tours of the whole trip. Straight away, our tour guide, John, was so friendly. He was giving us so much amazing information. And within an hour, we were getting views like this outside the bus. The bus was air conditioned, it had free Wi-Fi. Everyone on the tour was so lovely and I was chatting away to loads of different people from all over the world. And our first stop of the day was tea and coffee and cake in the beautiful seaside town of Torquay. Not Torquay, Devon, Torquay, Victoria, but I mean, look at it. It's giving Torquay and Devon a run for its money. Whenever, obviously, Torquay, I just associate with Devon. To be honest, it doesn't look that different to Devon if you take out the fact that the trees are all sort of different types of vegetation but it's beautiful here. So the tour is mainly older people and a few couples. So I feel like I'll chat, definitely chat to them, but I'm actually quite happy just exploring on my own today, which will be really, really nice as a lot of the tours going up the coast are definitely gonna be more young people and things like that. So yeah, I just can't believe how beautiful it is here. Um, and this is a really popular seaside resort for people from Melbourne, which I can totally understand why, because it's only down the road and it's gorgeous. So I've just spent about 20 minutes wandering up and down the beach, it's honestly gorgeous. They've now set up some like tea and coffee I think. So I'm gonna go and grab a cup of tea and a cake and then head to the toilet and then I might go and see what is up on the sort of boardwalk area before we head off to the next place. So I'm here at the Soldiers Archway, which the soldiers built to commemorate the sort of start of the Great Ocean Road. And it's really cool because if you look at the sign, well it's not cool, but the sign is actually really blackened at the edges and that's because in the 1983 bushfire, the Ash Wednesday fires, it actually started to burn because the archway set fire and one of the local residents actually rescued the sign, which is the only reason it's still here, which I just thought was very brave and really interesting. <laughs> Next up, we took a quick toilet break at the beautiful seaside town of Lawn, which was stunning. And I got to see my first cockatoo, which was really exciting. Sorry about the shaky footage, they did keep moving. Um, but there was one that was just absolutely unfazed by all the people around him. He was just living his best life. No questions asked. Um, and that was when I was like, oh my gosh, I'm definitely in Australia. Then we stopped at this beautiful lookout. This is where I feel like my camera's really not doing it justice. So I'm gonna put some photos on the screen because it was just unreal. We spent about five minutes here just taking in the views before we headed on to a little pathway where you can spot koalas in the wild. And we actually got to see three koalas. These are my first koala spottings in Australia. So I was very, very excited. I saw a lot more at the rest of my trip, but these were some of the cutest ones in my opinion. Then we stopped at Apollo Bay for lunch. This was a really lovely little town that had loads of little independent shops and it's home to the famous scallop pie which apparently they only really do here. I was told on good authority that I absolutely had to try one. So went in there, first in the queue and gave it a go. 
Hello everyone, so we have stopped in Apollo Bay for lunch and I actually had a scallop pie, which is like, the best way I can describe it is like chip shop curry sauce-ish in a pucker pie style pastry with scallops and it was actually so good. I was very pleasantly surprised. I thought I'd have to try one because they only do them here and yeah, I really, really liked it. So that's a surprise for the day. Next up, we are going on a rainforest walk, which I'm really excited about and then we're heading on to the 12 Apostles, which is the highlight of the trip, but honestly, I've just enjoyed the whole day so much that it might not even be a highlight. I've genuinely loved it. <laughs> Only a short drive away, we were soon at Mate's Rest Rainforest Walk. This was the first rainforest I saw in Australia and as per usual, the camera is just not doing it justice. I think this is the place where my camera can't cope the most is like forests and rainforests. So I have included here a clip on my phone which I very cleverly took just to show you the difference. Look at the difference in this clip. You're gonna be so glad when I switch to filming on my phone because the vlogs are gonna upgrade like that. Anyway, back to the present moment. We saw so many different types of cool tree. I think this was my favorite that like grows around another fallen tree. It's kind of like a parasite tree. And then I got my photo taken in this giant fallen tree, which was really cool. And John, again, was so knowledgeable. It was amazing. Hello everyone, so we've just gone through Mate's Rest, which is like a rainforest walk. Look how big these trees are. You can't even see. I can't even show you like how big these trees are. Most of them have been here since before, is it James Cook even found Australia? Obviously there were people living there before James Cook found Australia, but you know what I mean. The vegetation literally changed so quickly into rainforest. And now, I can't lie, I feel like I'm a celeb. I know it's not where they film I'm a celeb, I know that. But <laughs> the feelings there are all the same. <laughs> Hello everyone, so we are now at the 12 Apostles. Apparently there was never actually 12, there was only ever 11, and now there's only seven, because they've slowly collapsed over time, because they're rock formations that have been left by erosion of with of the rocks with the waves, you know what? Some of you will have done geography and know much more about it than me, but anyway. We've been so lucky with the weather today. It's often really rainy and overcast, but we've had blue skies. So I'm feeling so grateful for that. Out of everything that I saw while I was in Australia, I still think this next section of views is one of my favorites. I know that the weather isn't always like this in Victoria, so I'm aware that I got really lucky, but it was such a moment for me. I honestly could have stood there all day. The water was so blue and I mean, this is just nature at its best really, isn't it? Then we went to Lockard Gorge and John told us all about the story of the shipwreck that washed up here and how only two of them survived and they had a bit of like a love story. I can't remember all of it, I'm afraid, because it was six weeks ago, but I would definitely recommend Googling it. It's very interesting, but it was beautiful. Um, I can see why it would be quite traumatic to get washed up here on a shipwreck, but equally it was very, it was very scenic and we spent about an hour kind of in and around this area, in and around the National Park, just enjoying everything that it really had to offer before we headed down to the Gibson Steps. This for me was when I was like, okay, this has been one of the best days ever. I think this was the perfect way to finish it off. And I just stood here by myself, actually. I nearly missed the bus back because I was just so mesmerized by how beautiful it was. And I just felt so, at peace. Yeah, at peace. Not being funny and you probably can't even hear me because of the waves, but I'm having a bit of a moment because this is the first time since I can remember where I've not had education to worry about, I've not had a course deadline, I've not had a next step. It's all just completely free and open. And yes, I know my hair looks a mess, but I don't even care. I'm just having a fucking great time. Hi everyone, so I've currently got about seven trillion bags on me because I'm checking out of the first hostel. I've absolutely loved it here. The rooms are so nice. Everyone is super friendly. It's very social, which I really, really like. Um, so I would definitely recommend if you're staying in Melbourne. I honestly couldn't really fault it apart from noisy people in hostels, but people are going to be noisy in hostels. So that's just what you would expect of a hostel. Anyway, Molly and Tom have actually been kind enough to let me drop my bags at theirs because it's right opposite the coach station and I'm actually getting an overnight bus to Sydney tonight. So that's been really handy. I've just covered myself in sun cream to avoid any more sunburn. I'm gonna drop bags, go explore. Molly's gonna meet me after work and we'll continue the vlog. This is gonna be a really long vlog, but I'm not mad about it.
for once it's not just me in my room chatting about random stuff i'm actually doing stuff so it's quite nice <laughs> So I've just dropped my bags at Molly and Tom's. Sorry if you can hear the music over the top. Um, I'm now just doing a little bit of shopping because I feel like I need a couple more like tops and shorts just for like the really hot weather because I didn't really have many at home. So I thought I'd just buy them here. So I'm at the outlet store and there's so many nice things. So I'm gonna try them on. Hello, I'm currently in Starbucks and I'm not gonna lie, I am majorly flagging today. Like I've got no energy. I think it's finally caught up with me, but I've just not been sleeping well at all. I'm sure I'll get used to being in hostels and stuff, but I'm just not sleeping through the night, which I really struggle with. But I've got a coffee and we're gonna power through and hopefully I'll sleep tonight on the overnight bus. As I just mentioned there now, I was majorly struggling for energy. So after I went to the outlet, I went and decided to just have a slow walk to see a couple more sites on my last day here. So I went to Flinders Street Station and I also went to the ACMI Museum on Federation Square, which is like the history of moving pictures and visual media, which was really interesting. I didn't get many clips in there, so apologies for the quality of these clips. I then went to see St. Patrick's Cathedral, but there was a mass on, so I couldn't go in there. I think it's called St. Patrick's Cathedral. And I also went to see the Parliament building as well before grabbing a meal deal from 7-Eleven just to munch on while I was waiting for Molly, who I met in Flagstaff Gardens, I believe. Hello, so I air I air dropped Molly. I've always known Molly and basically said to her, let's do something this afternoon. But also I'm shattered. Uh, how can we resolve that? And she was like, I am also shattered. She had a very long shift like ran over today. So we've decided to come and read our books in Flagstaff Gardens, which is really beautiful and the sort of mix between the trees and the and like the high-rise buildings reminds me a lot of Central Park. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna chill. I'm gonna try and tan myself slightly. Um, I've got Factor 50 slathered all over me. And yeah, it should be really nice and relaxing. Then I think we're gonna head back to hers. I'm gonna make myself some dinner. Just very kindly letting me shower before I have to get my night bus. I really, really need to sleep. <laughs> Hello everyone. So Molly and Tom have very kindly provided me with dinner, shower, Wi-Fi, basically all the things that <laughs> that girl needs before an overnight journey. So I'm just editing this vlog actually. I probably won't even talk any more than this. I'm gonna end this vlog here actually because it's already gonna be so, so long. So I really, really hope you've enjoyed this first vlog. Let me know what you'd like to see different or the same in the following vlogs and I will pick this one up when I get on the bus to Sydney. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye guys.